The canon law of the Catholic Church is the system of laws and legal principles made and enforced by the hierarchical authorities of the Church to regulate its external organization and government and to order and direct the activities of Catholics toward the mission of the Church. It was the first modern Western legal system. Positive ecclesiastical laws based directly or indirectly upon immutable divine law or natural law derive formal authority in the case of universal laws from the supreme legislator, who possesses the totality of legislative, executive, and judicial power in his person, while particular laws derive formal authority from a legislator inferior to the supreme legislator. The actual subject material of the canons is not just doctrinal or moral in nature, but all-encompassing of the human condition. It has all the ordinary elements of a mature legal system, laws, courts, lawyers, judges, a fully articulated legal code, principles of legal interpretation, and coercive penalties. It lacks civilly binding force in most secular jurisdictions. Specialists in the field are usually called canonists. Canon law as a field is called canonistics. History and codification. The Catholic Church has the oldest continuously functioning legal system in the West, much later than Roman law, but predating the evolution of modern European civil law traditions. What began with rules adopted by the Apostles at the Council of Jerusalem in the first century has developed into a highly complex legal system, encapsulating not just norms of the New Testament, but some elements of the Hebrew, Roman, Visigothic, Saxon, and Celtic legal traditions. The history of Latin canon law can be divided into four periods the Juanticum, the Junovum, the Junovissimum and the Code of Canon Law. In relation to the Code, history can be divided into the Juvetus and the Junovum. The Canon Law of the Eastern Catholic Churches, which had developed some different disciplines and practices, underwent its own process of codification, resulting in the Code of Canons of the Eastern Churches promulgated in 1990 by Pope John Paul II. Juanticum The period of canonical history known as the Juanticum extends from the foundation of the Church to the time of Gratian. This period can be further divided into three periods. The time of the Apostles to the death of Pope Gelasius I, the end of the 5th century to the spurious collection of the 9th century, and the last up to the time of Gratian. In the early Church, the first canons were decreed by bishops united in ecumenical councils or local councils. Over time, these canons were supplemented with decretals of the bishops of Rome, which were responses to doubts or problems according to the maxim, Roma locutor est causa finiter est. A common misconception, the Catholic Encyclopedia links this saying to St. Augustine who actually said something quite different. Jam N. Under HAC causa duo concilia missa sunt ad sedim apostolicum, indirisum rescripta venerant, causa finiteres in response to the heretical Pelagianism of the time. In the first millennium of the Roman Church, the canons of various ecumenical and local councils were supplemented with decretals of the popes. These were gathered together into collections. Junovum The period of canonical history known as the Junovum or Middle Period covers the time from Gratian to the Council of Trent. The spurious conciliar canons and papal decrees were gathered together into collections, both unofficial and official. In the year 1000, there was no book that had attempted to summarize the whole body of canon law, to systematize it in whole or in part. The first truly systematic collection was assembled by the Camaldolese monk Gratian in the 11th century commonly known as the Decretum Gratiana but originally called the Concordance of Discordant Canons. Before Gratian there was no jurisprudence of canon law. Gratian is the founder of canonical jurisprudence, which merits him the title Father of Canon Law. 
Canon law greatly increased from 1140 to 1234. After that it slowed down, except for the laws of local councils, and secular laws supplemented. In 1234 Pope Gregory IX promulgated the first official collection of canons, called the Decretalia Gregory Noni or Liber Extra. This was followed by the Liber Sextus of Boniface VIII, the Clementines of Clement V, the Extravagantist Joannes XXII and the Extravagantist Communes, all of which followed the same structure as the Liber Extra. All these collections, with the Decretum Gratiana, are together referred to as the Corpus Juris Canonici. After the completion of the Corpus Juris Canonici, subsequent papal legislation was published in periodic volumes called Bularia. In the 13th century, the Roman Church began to collect and organize its canon law, which after a millennium of development had become a complex and difficult system of interpretation and cross-referencing. The official collections were the Liber Extra of Pope Gregory IX, the Liber Sextus of Boniface VIII and the Clementines, prepared for Clement V but published by John XXII. These were addressed to the universities by papal letters at the beginning of each collection, and these texts became textbooks for aspiring canon lawyers. In 1582 a compilation was made of the Decretum, Extra, the Sext, the Clementines in the Extravagantis, Junovisimum the third canonical period, known as the Junovisimum, stretches from the Council of Trent to the promulgation of the 1917 Code of Canon Law which took legal effect in 1918. The start of the Junovisimum is not universally agreed upon, however, Dr. Edward N. Peters argues that the Junovisimum actually started with the Liber Extra of Gregory IX in 1234. Judicis, the fourth period of canonical history is that of the present day, initiated by the promulgation of the 1917 Code of Canon Law on 27 May 1917. It is sometimes referred to as the Judicis or, in comparison with all law before it, the Junovum. From time to time, the Pontifical Council for Legislative Texts issues authentic interpretations regarding the Code. The Pope occasionally amends the text of the Codes. Pio Benedictine law by the 19th century, the body of canonical legislation included some 10,000 norms. Many of these were difficult to reconcile with one another due to changes in circumstances and practice. The situation impelled Pope Street. Pius X to order the creation of the first Code of Canon Law, a single volume of clearly stated laws. Under the aegis of the Cardinal Pietro Gaspari, the Commission for the Codification of Canon Law was completed under Benedict XV, who promulgated the Code on 27 May 1917, effective on 29 May 1918, the work having been begun by Pius X. It was sometimes called the Pio Benedictine Code, but more often the 1917 Code to distinguish it from the later 1983 Code which replaced it. In its preparation, centuries of material was examined, scrutinized for authenticity by leading experts, and harmonized as much as possible with opposing canons and even other codes, from the Code of Justinian to the Napoleonic Code. Johanno Pauline law in the succeeding decades, some parts of the 1917 code were retouched, especially under Pope Pius XII. In 1959, Pope John XXIII announced together with his intention to call the Second Vatican Council a synod of the Diocese of Rome, that the 1917 code would be completely revised. In 1963, the commission appointed to undertake the task decided to delay the project until the council had been concluded. After the Second Ecumenical Council of the Vatican closed in 1965, it became apparent that the code would need to be revised in light of the documents and theology of Vatican II. When work finally began, 
Almost two decades of study and discussion on drafts of the various sections were needed before Pope John Paul II could promulgate the revised edition, which came into force on 27 November 1983, having been promulgated via the Apostolic Constitution Sacra Disciplina Ledgers of 25 January 1983 containing 1752 canons, it is the law currently binding on the Latin Roman Church. This edition is referred to as the 1983 Code of Canon Law to distinguish it from the 1917 Code. Like the preceding edition, it applies to Roman Catholics of the Latin Rite. Oriental law for Eastern Catholics Two sections of Eastern canon law had already, under Pope Pius XII, been put in the form of short canons. These parts were revised as part of the application of Pope John XXIII's decision to carry out a general revision of the Church's canon law. As a result a distinct code for members of the Eastern Catholic Churches came into effect for the first time on 1 October 1991. The Code of Canons of the Eastern Churches, as it is called, differs from the Latin Code of Canon Law in matters where Eastern and Latin traditions diverge, such as terminology, discipline concerning hierarchical offices and administration of the sacraments, canon law as legal system. Much of the legislative style was adapted from that of Roman law especially the Justinianic corpus juris civilis. As a result, Roman ecclesiastical courts tend to follow the Roman law style of continental Europe with some variation. After the fall of the Roman Empire and up until the revival of Roman law in the 11th century canon law served as the most important unifying force among the local systems in the civil law tradition. The Catholic Church developed the inquisitorial system in the Middle Ages. This judicial system features collegiate panels of judges and an investigative form of proceeding, in contradistinction to the adversarial system found in the common law of England and many of her former colonies, which utilizes concepts such as juries and single judges. The institutions and practices of canon law parallel the legal development of much of Europe, and consequently both modern civil law and common law bear the influences of canon law. Edson Lewis Sample, a Brazilian expert in canon law, says that canon law is contained in the genesis of various institutes of civil law, such as the law in continental Europe and Latin American countries. Sample explains that canon law has significant influence in contemporary society. Canonical jurisprudential theory generally follows the principles of Aristotelian Thomistic legal philosophy. While the term law is never explicitly defined in the code, the Catechism of the Catholic Church cites Aquinas in defining law as an ordinance of reason for the common good promulgated by the one who is in charge of the community, and reformulates it as a rule of conduct enacted by competent authority for the sake of the common good. Sources of law The primary canonical sources of law are 1983 Code of Canon Law, Code of Canons of the Eastern Churches, Pastor Bonus, in the Apostolic Constitution Sacra Canons, by means of which he promulgated the Code of Canons of the Eastern Churches. John Paul II stated by the publication of this code, the canonical ordering of the whole church is thus at length completed, following as it does, dot the Apostolic Constitution on the Roman Curia of 1988, pbn. 2. Other sources include Apostolic Constitutions, Moti Bis Propriasa, and Particular Law, Canon Law Faculties and Institutes, and Canonical Scholarship. The academic degrees in Canon Law are the JCB, JCL, and the JCD, and those with the JCL, or higher are usually called Canonists, or Canon Lawyers. Because of its specialized nature, advanced degrees in civil law or theology are normal prerequisites for the study of canon law. Canon law as a field is called canonistics. 
Fundamental Theory of Canon Law The fundamental theory of canon law is a newer discipline that takes as its object the existence and nature of what is juridical in the Church of Jesus Christ. It is the philosophy and theology of canon law. Scholars of the discipline ask questions such as, why does canon law exist? Why should canon law exist? How does canon law relate to the mystery of the Church and her hierarchical constitution? The discipline seeks to provide a theoretical basis for the coexistence and complementarity of canon law and the Catholic Church, and it seeks to refute the canonical anti-juridicism of the various heretical movements and of the Protestant Reformation on the one hand, and on the other, the anti-juridicism deriving from a belief that all law is identifiable with the law of the state, that in order to be true law, the state must be its maker. The discipline seeks to better explain the nature of law in the Church and engages in theological discussions in post-conciliar Catholicism and seeks to combat post-conciliar anti-juridicism, canon law and church office. Under the 1983 Code of Canon Law, all seminary students are required to take courses in canon law. Some ecclesiastical officials are required to have the doctorate or at least the licentiate in canon law in order to fulfill their functions. Judicial vicars, judges, promoters of justice, defenders of the bond, canonical advocates. In addition, vicars general and episcopal vicars are to be doctors, or at least licensed in canon law or theology. Ordinarily, bishops are to have an advanced degree in scripture, theology, or canon law. Patron Saint Saint Raymond de Peñafit, a Spanish Dominican priest, is the patron saint of canonists, due to his important contributions to canon law. Other saintly patrons include Street, Evo of Chartres and the Jesuit Street, Robert Bellarmine. Related terms